Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem robot bounded in circle. And this actually, according to Leak Code Premium, happens to be the number one asked question by Amazon of this year, 2021. And this is actually a pretty unique problem. What makes this problem difficult is that it's definitely different from most other Leak Code problems that we've solved before. And it's been a few days since I uploaded, so I'm a little bit rusty, but that's okay. So let's get into it. We're basically given an infinite two-dimensional plane. We have a robot that initially starts at the origin, zero, zero, and faces the north direction. And this robot can receive one of three instructions. It can receive the instruction just to go straight by one unit. So whatever direction it's facing, initially it's gonna be north. It's gonna go one unit in the north direction. The other two instructions are not about moving, but about rotating the robot. So it can turn 90 degrees to the left or it can turn 90 degrees to the right. So if it starts facing north, you know, that's one direction. It can uh, face west, east, and south. So basically there's four different directions that this robot could face. And so the robot is gonna perform a set of instructions given in order, and it's gonna repeat these instructions basically forever. And you know, this could be an example instructions, right? Go, go, turn to the left twice, and then go, go again. And what we wanna do is given these instructions, we wanna return true if and only if there exists a circle in the plane such that the robot never leaves the circle. Basically using these instructions, does the robot get stuck in an infinite loop? That's the question we're trying to answer. And it definitely doesn't fit into many leak code problem patterns. That's what's gonna make this problem a little bit challenging to explain, but I'm gonna do my best, so let's get into it. So suppose that this is kind of a two dimensional grid that we have and that these are the instructions, right? Go, go, turn to the left 90 degrees, turn to the left 90 degrees again, go, go. And if we repeat these forever, are we gonna get stuck in an infinite loop or not? Well, let's just kind of simulate this at first. So initially we start at the origin. Let's have our direction facing north, right? So initially we are facing north, and so we wanna go twice. So what's gonna happen? Well, we're gonna move by one, then we're gonna move by two. We're gonna be in this position, still facing north. And then we're gonna turn left twice, right? So if we turn left once 90 degrees, then we're gonna be facing left. If we, were, if we do it twice, then we're gonna be facing down, right, south. And then we wanna go, go again. So then you know, we go down one, we go down two, then we start back at the origin. The only difference is now, instead of facing north, now we're gonna be facing south. But so obviously we got back to the start, right? Now my question to you is, okay, well, we have, we're gonna basically follow this exact same path, but now we're starting at a different direction, right? Now we're facing south, right? So my question is, are we gonna uh, go through another loop just as we did before? Yes, because this path is gonna be some kind of vector on this two dimensional grid, right? In this case, the vector was up by two and then went straight down by two. So in, in total, the, the vector was a net difference of zero, right? It basically started where it ends. And so even though first we were facing north, now we're facing south, it's gonna follow that same path. It's gonna go, it's gonna move by two and then it's gonna go back in the same direction that it came from because this vector, you know, is a zero vector. It doesn't really move anywhere. So with this, at least, yes, we're gonna return true because this robot is gonna be stuck in an infinite loop. Now, what if we had a different set of instructions? What if instead of having this, we just had a GG, a go-go? That means we'd start at the bottom, we'd move by two up in the north direction, right? So that's what our vector would be, just you know, north by two. And then, you know, that's our entire instructions, right? So then we're gonna repeat that again on the second iteration. So then our vector is yes, going up by two again, and then going up by two again, et cetera, et cetera, right? That would be the instruction. So in this case, we'd return false because it's obviously not an infinite loop. It's just gonna keep going straight up. It's not gonna go, it's not a cycle where it's gonna return back to the origin. Right, so that's a case where we return false. Now, what if the actual instructions were uh, go, go, and then turn left twice? What would be, what would happen then? Would then it turn into a loop? Well, let's take a look at what the vector would be. The go, go is just gonna be north by two, right? Starting from the origin, 
go north by two. And so then we're going to be here facing north and then turn left twice, right? So if we turn left twice, then we're going to turn to the left. And once again, we're going to be turning down, right? So assume that this is kind of what our uh, result would look like. Our robot is here. They're facing down. But we are we are not at the origin, right? So now if we run the instructions again, what's going to happen? We're going to we're going to go go twice. In this case, we're going to go down because that's the direction we're facing, and then we're going to turn left twice. Uh, so we get down here, we turn left twice, we turn this way, and then we turn this way. So now we're back at the origin facing north. So pretty much we just completed a loop. It was two iterations, right? First we went north, then we went south, and now we're back at where we started and we're facing the same direction that we were when we originally got here. So as you can see that this whole component, this vector, it changes two things. It changes the it changes the position that we're at and it changes the direction. Both are important if we want to know if the vector creates a cycle cycle or not. So how do we know if it's going to get, you know, stuck in a cycle? Well, one is if the position, the change in position is zero, meaning after an entire uh, iteration through the instructions, we started at the origin and we end back at the origin. That obviously means the change in position is zero. That means we have a cycle, right? The change in direction is also important. Suppose the position actually does change, right? We start we, let's say we start at the origin, but we move up by four, right? And then we get into a different position, right? That's perfectly fine. It could still end up in a cycle, right? It could still go back where we started, but it depends if the direction changed or not. In this case, let's say the direction does not change. We go up by four and then we go up by four again because the direction never changes and we keep doing that. So basically if the direction does not change, right? The, we, we change position, but the direction doesn't change. Then we're going to return false because of course then it's never going to get stuck in a cycle it's just going to keep moving in one direction but the position changes and the direction changes then we are guaranteed to have a cycle because let's say okay in this case we went up by two right but let's say our direction or we went up by four but our direction changed uh, 180 degrees so now we're facing down so then we're going to do the exact same vector going in the opposite direction we're going to end up back at the origin so in that case we kind of have a cycle of two right a cycle of two where the direction changed by 180 degrees so we get stuck in a cycle of two suppose the opposite happened or not the opposite but something else where instead of changing 180 degrees we do change 90 degrees what's going to happen then well in that case it's you know we went up we went we went up by four this time we're going to go right by four because initially the direction we're facing is right and then we're going to uh, we're going to change direction again by 90 degrees so let's say we're facing south then then again we're going to move forward by 90 degrees now we're going to be facing left and once again we're going to go straight by four and then we're going to get back to where we started so you can see that if the change in direction was 90 degrees uh, and the position change then we're going to get stuck in a cycle of four if it was the opposite if instead of facing the right this was changed facing to the left then we'd have the exact same cycle except on the other side of this two-dimensional grid we'd have a cycle of four so basically all the cases that i just went through you can see that the either we have you know a cycle of size zero or we have a cycle of size two or we have a cycle of size four so basically if we ran through these instructions if we do a simulation of these instructions four times right and we are back at the origin back where we started that means that we have a cycle right or well, another thing we could do is basically run this simulation exactly once and then see that criteria that i mentioned if the position did not change then we have a cycle or if the position did change and the direction also changed then we are also guaranteed to have a cycle so that's what i'm going to do because that's with this solution we only have to iterate through these uh, instructions up here only once so that's the way i'm going to do it but you could uh, iterate through them four times and then manually check if we have a cycle or not but that is enough information for us to write out the solution. Okay, so now let's get into the code. So remember, there's two things, two things about our state that we're going to be maintaining. One is the direction, so the x direction and the y direction, which I'm going to initialize as 0, 1. What that means is that what direction are we facing? We're facing the positive 1 y direction. Basically, we're facing up. We're facing north. 
uh, this is this this is basically going to indicate where we're going to be moving, uh, and we're going to be loc we're going to be determining our position in these variables x and y. So initially we're at the origin, so we can say zero zero. So if we let's say we got a go uh, instruction in our instructions list, basically to our position x y, we're just going to add the these direction x direction y, add them to here, which is only going to end up updating the y value, which is what we want because we're facing north right now. So uh, like I said, I'm gonna do this by just iterating through the instructions once. So for every direction in the instructions, what are we gonna do? Well, there's three cases, right? One is if the case is a G, meaning it's the letter go, uh, we wanna go. Another case, else if this direction character happens to be a left, that means we're rotating left. And the last else is going to be if it happens to be a right character, an R. Uh, there's only three cases, so we can leave that in our else case. And like I mentioned, the easiest case is the go, right? The go is just going to tell us how we can update our X and Y. Basically, to the X, we're going to add the direction X value. And to the Y, we're going to add the direction Y value. Now that's easy. Now, next is the rotation, right? We're either going to rotate left or we're going to rotate right. There's many ways to write out this code. I'm going to show you a way that I actually did not come up with. But if you recall from linear algebra, what I do know is if you're rotating 90 degrees, you're basically swapping the X and Y uh, values, right? You're basically making a perpendicular line. So the direction X and the direction Y are going to be swapped, sort of, right? That's one point to uh, rotating it. So let's copy paste these and just reverse it. So direction X is going to be set to direction Y. Direction Y is going to be set to direction X. But one other thing, suppose we're facing the up direction, right? We're facing uh, the up direction, meaning right now our direction is 0, 1, x is 0, y is 1, and we want to rotate left. So we're obviously going to swap x and y. Direction x is now going to be set to 1, and direction y is going to be set to 0. But 1, 0 basically is the direction to the right. X being one means we're facing the right, but we actually want it to be facing the left direction. So what we're gonna do instead is set uh, direction X to the negative of direction Y. That's just uh, you know the way that it works out. You, I forgot most of my linear algebra, so I just had to read this in the discuss section. But if you remember, this is kind of how a property uh, to rotate left works. And to rotate right is just gonna be the opposite. So suppose, you know, we're facing this direction and we want to rotate right. We would basically want to reverse this. We want we don't want the negative to go here. We want the negative to go here because suppose maybe we're facing the right direction and we want now to rotate uh, 90 degrees to the right. So we want to face the down direction. And to do that, we would have to set the direction Y, not set it to one, but we'd have to set it to negative one. So that's kind of an example for that. But basically, this portion is kind of just the math, and this is just an easy way to write it. I didn't want to write super long, confusing code, even though this is kind of hard to come up with. But this is the entire code. Once we're done with that, then remember, what was our condition for returning true? We're returning true if the X and Y, basically, we end, basically the position did not change. If the position did not change, the X and Y is going to be 0, 0, meaning we started where we ended. That means we have a cycle, so then we return true. Uh, the other case is if the direction did change by at least one direction. It doesn't matter what the direction is, but it changed by at least one. So how do we know that? Well, we can check if our direction X and direction Y is not equal to what it was initially. What was it initially? It was zero, one. So if it's not equal to zero, one, after one iteration through the instructions, that means the direction changed. If the direction did change, that means we have a loop, right? I kind of showed that in the picture drawing. And this is the entire code now. Uh, it's definitely not equal easy to come up with, you know, code as readable as this on your own on your first try. I was not able to either, but some of the intuition I did, I was able to explain it. So I hope that this was helpful. You can see that this is a very efficient solution, not super easy to come up with though. So I hope this was helpful. If it was, please like, and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.